two is simply factor. And this example is the limit x approaches negative three. And it's x squared minus nine over x plus three. Then you simply factor and it's x plus three x minus 3 all over x plus 3. And then x plus 3 gets crossed out and you're left with x minus 3. Then you substitute and you plug in negative 3 minus 3 and you get negative 6. Okay, so I'm going to be explaining horizontal limits. Now the way you're going to find a horizontal limit when it's going to infinity, you just use the leading coefficients, which would be 3 in this case. And when they're the same, that's just what it is, just 5 eighths in any problem. But let's say you have different coefficients. For example, you have, in another problem, let's say this wasn't a 3, this is like a 2. Since, since the numerator, is greater than the denominator, it would be it would be infinity. Because let's just say for example you have x squared over x and x is equal to infinity. The number would be the number would be really big, so in the graph it would kind of be like this just shooting up. Okay, and then Let's just say, another example, let's just say the denominator is greater than the numerator. So, when it's great, whoops. So when it's greater than the numerator, greater than the numerator, it would be a lot smaller because, again, using a different way, it would be, let's just say, x squared over x cubed, and then when it's going to infinity, the number would be a lot smaller because it would be such a small number, it would just go straight down, it would never reach zero, but it would be just so small that 
It's just zero. So Gabriel over here is going to explain vertically. Oh. Asymptotes. <laughs> okay, so my subject was um, limits and rational expressions. As you can see that this is a rational expression, 2x plus 1 over x. And I'm going to do what Brian just taught us, how to find the vertical and the horizontal asymptote. Uh, the vertical asymptote, the way you find it is the bottom, the denominator has to equal 0. In this case, x, obviously, which is going to be x, is equal to 0. And that is your vertical asymptote. Your horizontal asymptote, the way you find it, as he was saying, you find the leading coefficients, which right here would be an imaginary one, and you divide them. So it would be 2 it would be 2x over x. Cancel out the x is 2 over 1. You have your horizontal asymptote at 2. Um, OK, so now let's just graph that. So you got your vertical asymptote at 0. See it right here. And then you have your horizontal asymptote at 2. I'm going to cut through this, but leave it at 2. And then the way you want to plot it to see which way the parabola is going, or not the parabola, the asymptotes, you, you plug in numbers that are closest to zero, to the, the vertical asymptote. So as I did here, you have negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.00, just getting really close to zero. And as you can see, it gets bigger. So what we would do is that you know from the negative side, it's going to just go off into infinity. So you do it from the positive side, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and you can see it's going to negative infinity. So it come down here, and it looks something like that. So that's how you use limits and rational expressions together. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, some mistakes people would do is they would either plug in the wrong numbers they, they can mistake it for plugging in numbers closer to the horizontal asymptote on the y-axis. Um, some other mistakes, people get the vertical asymptote process with the horizontal asymptote process mixed up. So you need to know that this went back to Brian's denominator over numerator, numerator or numerator greater than denominator, things like that. And that's pretty much it. So first of all, as Edward, Edgar already talked about, the requirements, limit must exist at x equals c, and the function of c is defined, limit f of x is equal to fc. So I'm going to go ahead and show you types of continuity. First of all, we have point discontinuity, where you can see, and first of all, the definition is, what someone probably taught us, was that, say you have a pen here, and you're just drawing along, as long as you can keep going, going along, and you don't have to pick it up, even if there's a cusp, it's still continuous. But once you have a hole there, and you can't go through that, it's like you're stuck, man. You're just stuck. It's not smooth, so you just can't do it. All right, so take care of that stuff. And then, like I talked about, jumps, continuities, and asymptotes. Uh, another form. So I already showed you this. And here we have a graph. Nice example. And first question, is the function continuous at x equals negative 4? First of all, the limit does not exist because we see here, I mean, we have a jump discontinuity. Like, just no limit. What's going on there? So we plug it in. x equals negative 4. We find that the limit is not the limit, but it equals 2 here. Or I'm sorry, 2 here. Sorry. I'm kind of blind. And then down here, we see that the limit of negative 4 does not exist. Therefore, it's not continuous because, I mean, you can't jump down there. just can't do it. OK, over here. Is the function continuous at x equals 2? This point here, this this point is continuity right here. And the limit here is 1. So plug in, plug in 2, you get 1. So f of 2 equals 5. This point here, you get 5. And then just because, I mean, it works and there's a limit, that doesn't mean it's continuous because of the fact that we don't have a point there. OK, thank you very much. That's the continuity with examples. Peace out.